Icon Lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Thursday, July 9th, 2020 and this is video number 62. So in this episode of my podcast, I'm going to be sharing with you some finished works and also a work in progress that I'd love to share. And if you're just new and switching onto this channel for the first time, hi, my name's Gary and I'm the host of Urban Yarn. And I have set this channel up to talk about all of my yarn life. And that includes knitting, crocheting, a little bit of dabbling in uh, dyeing of yarn. And wherever the yarn journey shall take me, I don't know from one moment to the next. So. Please uh, enjoy the next little while. If the content sounds like it to be something up your alley, then uh, please give me a thumbs up, uh, which is the like button or the thumbs up button down below here. And think about subscribing and becoming one of my Yanni friends. And to all those Yanni friends who have come back, welcome back. I love seeing you and I love reading your comments. Thank you for also being a great source of wisdom for me and uh, providing me with a way out of holes that I d dig myself into uh, in the yarny, I guess, dilemmas that I create or encounter. So those are much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's begin with what I'm wearing. Da -da -da -da. I will get up and show you the finished Drangy Pullover by Stephen West. So, oh, I gotta bend down a little bit. I can't really stand back. I'm sort of like leaning, surfing over the couch right now. So, there we go. Four inches of ease, which is what the pattern called for. It meant that I had to go to the large knit uh, pattern. And if I was to do it again, I'd probably do the medium. I think four inches of positive ease is a little too much, but for my first Drangy pullover, it is a great mix of yarn, I feel, and I love how it turned out. When I was here at the yoke and doing this alternating uh, pattern work, I didn't know whether I would enjoy wearing this, but now that it's all finished, I feel the bottom part kind of brings it down a notch and tones it down, and I'm really, really happy with the yarn. So I'll just show you some of the elements. Uh, what I have here in the body and the sleeves are two yarns, and this one here is the Noro yarn, which is the uh, in the Katori collection and the name of the color is Labyrinth and or the color number is seven so this is the label of the yarn and what I paired it with here every fourth row I chose to reflect the ridging uh, which is in the pattern and put it down in the body and the sleeves. I chose a grey colour, which is Hobium's Yarn Art Tweed in the colourway, doesn't have a name, just a colour number, 225. And up here in the yoke, I'll just bring the chair back, uh, we have the contrast colour here which is the turquoise, and that was in uh, Ice Yarn's Wool Aran Cord, or Wool Cord Aran. I don't know which one it was, <laughs> which way it was. it's represented. Um, and that you can find in their winter collection or winter series of yarns on their website if you're, if you're wanting to look for it. It is a roving style yarn, actually, the uh, Noro and the Ice Yarns in this sweater are both roving, so that's thick and thin. And it was going from a two, I would say a two to a, at times, a five weight for the Noro. And for the Ice Yarns, it was a little bit more of a three to four weight. The meandering of that thick and thin was a little, little less severe than the Noro. 
So really loved it. It has these wonderful features in the cuffs and also the, the waistband and a very modern styled squared off neckline which is uh, something that I don't have any of uh, in my own wardrobe collection so I am kind of getting used to this whole very straight severe neckline. Um, I have a couple of v-necks and most of my necklines are crew neck. So what do you think? I absolutely enjoyed uh, making it and I like the fit. It's very relaxed. Uh, so yeah, what do you think? What do you think? Oh my god, I sound like Lisa from Lisa's Crochet. Hi Lisa! And I'll tell you a little bit about why this make came along and what I'm entering it into. So I am entering this sweater into uh, the needles at the ready have created a cowl or a, I should say, knit along that uh, is called Let's Hear It For The Boys. And I'll link all the details down below to anything that I mentioned with patterns or with any of the make alongs or knit alongs. Uh, any of the channels that I mentioned will be down in the description box below. So the premise of this, uh, I guess, knit along is that you're featuring the males in the knitting community. So whether you are, um, you're using a, a male uh, who has created a pattern or if you're using a indie dyer who is a male dyer of yarn, then I think there's one more category. I keep forgetting it. Oh, if the garment is actually made for a male. So either or, you can tick any of the boxes and enter the the knit along as well if you so choose. So it's going until I believe the end of August and my entry is done. So I'm going to upload this into the finished object uh, part of their Ravelry uh, chain or, or thread that they have going and yeah I might even do another one. I don't know. We'll see. I'm thinking of maybe uh, switching up and doing another pullover pattern because there are a few things in this particular pattern that uh, I want to change or wear for a while and see where it takes me with the wash and wear and uh, see what happens to the drape of this particular yarn before attempting the next uh, drangy pullover. So I will link down below the drangy pullover pattern which is on Ravelry and without giving too much away of the pattern this is uh, how it looks in the PDF. It's a paid for pattern so and it's a knit pattern for those people who didn't catch that already. Um, you can uh, link to it through the, through the uh, description box link that I'm going to provide. The second thing that I finished, I've done two sets of these, this is the third set, are these cozy mittens. I absolutely love how these set came out. So my whole three pairs that I've done with, uh, with this pattern have been to use my um, latte cakes and hold them with a sock yarn. So I used a little bit of scraps here for the, for the uh, wristbands. And then I went into the latte cake and held them with a little bit of a, what was it called? It was called Croy Sock Yarn and the colorway was called Fiesta. So oranges, purples and yellows. And the latte cake that I held that particular Croy Sock Yarn with was Karen Latte Cakes in the colorway uh, Grey Shock. And what I liked about the Grey Shock was this lovely yellow. So it reminds me of the 80s. And if I had finished these a little earlier, maybe last week sometime, I would have loved to have put these in Chevy Rowell's. Uh, she had a 80s make along. And I think it was called the Kids 80s Make Along. And I think those would have been prime examples of the 80s. 
when I look at these, I remember uh, my days when I was a teenager in the 80s, uh, loving these fluorescent colours. And uh, we had a little bit more, uh, I guess, black blacks with fluorescent. They weren't these fluffy greys, but this fluorescent and the and the um, purpley colours here and the pinks were very much um, part of everyone's wardrobe palette. And I think of The Cure when they did all their black lighting uh, music video clips that glowed in the dark those were amazing amazing films film uh, music music clips so yeah these are going to be gifted to my sister in Australia and she's also a kid from the 80s um, she grew up in the 80s as a teenager so I think she'll really really get a kick out of these uh, so again a free pattern it's called cozy mittens and the pattern is from Katie Himmelberg so I've used this one quite a lot. It's getting pretty ratty, but it's uh, still doing its job. It's telling me, um, you know, what to do. Then uh, I guess I move on to the work in progress. So my work in progress is uh, something that I've been practicing and it will be something I revisit again and again because there are uh, stitch works in this large swatch that I'm doing uh, that I want to try and translate into all different shapes. So I want to learn how to manipulate uh, rows of stitches that will work in mathematically in a triangle shawl or triangle shape, um, a bias shape of a rectangle or a parallelogram, I think they call it on the bias, and a rectangle shape as well. So here it is. So this is on the bias. And I want to just tell you the story a little bit about how I got to come up with this idea. It actually borrows from a lot of different um, things that I've been making in the past that I absolutely love. So this is the Just Feel Festive Shawl that I love so much by Kalisha Ryan and she has a podcast called The Quirky Monday Crafts and uh, so I was intending when I was making this to make the Just Feel Festive shawl out of my scraps and these are all scrap uh, ends of projects that I've done in the last six months and then I kind of thought no challenge yourself a little more and um, because I love the Dragon Valley shawl too I wanted to combine that ridging that the Dragon Valley shawl has as well so I did uh, alternate between the two and I had a number of pullback or frogs uh, frogging of the of the ends because I didn't know how to do the the row count properly with the two together so in the end I figured it out and I have the two going concurrently together and the thing that I did different for the Dragon Valley shawl as to how I've incorporated that stitch into this one is that the Dragon Valley shawl gives you one smooth side and one ridge side but with the one that I'm making I'm doing both of them are ridges, ridge sides. So I'm doing it reversible. I absolutely love it so much. Uh, it joins the two things that I really, really like. So this is, a, I wouldn't wear it together with this, but I'm thinking of with this um, uh, parallelogram or the bias, I'm gonna be continuing on to the length of maybe six feet and then it's going to become uh, like a drapey, a drapey shawl, a drapey scarf. So you can, you can see the different jobs that I've been doing and had leftovers from uh, in, in here. <laughs> I'll just quickly go through some of them. I have the actual Havana cake remnants of the Dragon Valley shawl that I that I did. I have some sock yarn from one of the first uh, mittens, cozy mittens that I held together with 
with the Karen Latte Cake. Uh, what else do I have here? Oh, I have uh, the Bucket Shawl uh, Crochet Bucket, uh, sorry, the Crochet Bucket Bag remnants of some of the yarn that I held with the Bucket Bag, as well as the Stormy Sea Scarf, which is a hand dyed yarn that I did myself, which is this jade green color. So a number of uh, projects there, and I'm moving into some more uh, scrap yarn as well. Um, so yeah, I think that covers all of the projects that I am working on and what I have completed. So I hope you enjoyed them. I really like this sweater a lot. Now I'll get into the list of things that I've been watching that I missed uh, in the last podcast because there were a few and um, I'm gonna add them here so I have to talk about Chevy Rowell's last video that I watched so she with the 80s make-along that closed she was doing the announcement of the winners and uh, she was trying some Vegemite so I'm from Australia I found it hilarious she got everyone to try Vegemite and uh, they took us consensus and uh, Chevy loved the Vegemite so well she didn't love it she said it was good it was fine so that's great I appreciate that everyone tried it at least um, the other one that I want to uh, shout out are a couple of lives that I've joined as well in the last little while so I saw Granny D as usual I always try and pop in and say hi hi Granny D how you doing and um, Ross from Smells Like Yarn he also has a ongoing uh, schedule with Twitter live feeds and um, I'm not sure how to link that down below but um, I will link uh, his podcast station here on YouTube and I'm sure he has it somewhere in his description box but he has a great bunch of people that go in there and I'm really enjoying the uh, communications and conversation in that room as well so thanks Ross hi how you doing um, yeah the other things that I've been watching on uh, I guess it's prime is it prime plus yeah prime video I've been watching a program called Homecoming and uh, we just finished the two seasons. Uh, we knocked that out of the park pretty quickly because each uh, episode is like only 20 minutes but it leaves you craving the next episode because it leaves off on a cliffhanger that you just need to watch the next one. So if you're short on things to watch and you you like something that's more of a uh, thriller mystery kind of uh, beautiful cinematography uh, I haven't seen anything uh, of that caliber for a long time in I guess movie making and the soundtrack is phenomenal I get thrown back to uh, Hitchcock when I'm listening to their soundtrack or a film, film noir so I really really enjoy the soundtrack as well um, if you're short on things to watch give it a go try the first episode it's only 20 minutes so uh, you might see some familiar faces in there from uh, big name uh, I guess Hollywood stars and uh, yeah uh, what else have I been watching that I can talk about uh, I think I've come to a close oh Hamilton so me and hubby watched Hamilton which is on Disney Plus and we really enjoyed it and I have to say that who stole the whole performance for me was the crazy King George uh, I guess he was the monarch of the time when uh, the US was getting their independence and creating their stature of I guess civil rights um, so yeah, the other thing that I want to showcase is a bit of a fun thing. Uh, so hubby just got home and he said, hey, guess what I got? I bought you, uh, you and me something that we're going to wear when we social distance for a beer tasting. And uh, so I was very curious about the beer tasting and social distancing. So uh, he said that he got us our pride garments that we're going to be wearing. So. These are hubbies. 
We will be wearing other garments, including uh, upper garments like tops. I'm hoping anyway, everyone else is going to be doing the same thing. And here is me. <laughs> so what do you think? What do you think? Lisa, what do you think? Um, anyway, so that uh, concludes the episode and I just want to thank you for watching this far and I am enjoying my summer. I hope you're doing the same thing and I will catch you in the next episode. Thanks. Bye.